The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, Part 2. Alan, Mr. Summers said. Anderson. Bentham. Seems like there's no time at all between lotteries anymore, Mrs. Delacroix said to Mrs. Graves in the back row. Seems like we got through with the last one only last week. Time sure goes fast, Mrs. Graves said. Clark. Delacroix. There goes my old man, Mrs. Delacroix said. She held her breath while her husband went forward. Dunbar, Mr. Summers said, and Mrs. Dunbar went steadily to the box while one of the women said, Go on, Janie, and another said, There she goes. We're next, Mrs. Graves said. She watched while Mr. Graves came around from the side of the box, greeted Mr. Summers gravely, and selected a slip of paper from the box. By now, all through the crowd, there were men holding the small folded papers in their large hands, turning them over and over nervously. Mrs. Dunbar and her two sons stood together, Mrs. Dunbar holding the slip of paper. Harbert Hutchinson. Get up there, Bill, Mrs. Hutchinson said, and the people near her laughed. Jones. They do say, Mr. Adams said to old man Warner, who stood next to him, that over in the North Village they're talking of giving up the lottery. Old man Warner snorted. Pack of crazy fools, he said. Listening to the young folks, nothing's good enough for them. Next thing you know, they'll be wanting to go back to living in caves. Nobody work anymore. Live that way for a while. Used to be a saying about lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. First thing you know, we'd all be eating stewed chickweed and acorns. There's always been a lottery, he added petulantly. Bad enough to see young Joe Summers up there joking with everybody. Some places have already quit lotteries, Mrs. Adams said. Nothing but trouble in that, old man Warner said stoutly. Pack of young fools. Martin, and Bobby Martin watched his father go forward. Overdyke. Percy. I wish they'd hurry, Mrs. Dunbar said to her older son. I wish they'd hurry. They're almost through, her son said. You get ready to run, tell Dad, Mrs. Dunbar said. Mr. Summers called his own name and then stepped forward precisely and selected a slip from the box. Then he called, Warner? 77th year I've been in the lottery, old man Warner said as he went through the crowd. 77th time. Watson? The tall boy came awkwardly through the crowd. Someone said, Don't be nervous, Jack. And Mr. Summers said, Take your time, son. Zanini. After that, there was a long pause, a breathless pause, until Mr. Summers, holding his slip of paper in the air, said, All right, fellows. For a minute, no one moved, and then all the slips of paper were opened. Suddenly, all the women began to speak at once, saying, Who is it? Who's got it? Is it the Dunbars? Is it the Watsons? Then the voices began to say, It's Hutchinson. It's Bill. Bill Hutchinson's got it. Go tell your father, Mrs. Dunbar said to her older son. People began to look around to see the Hutchinsons. Bill Hutchinson was standing quiet, staring down at the paper in his hand. Suddenly, Tessie Hutchinson shouted to Mr. Summers, You didn't give him time enough to take any paper he wanted. I saw you. It wasn't fair. Be a good sport, Tessie, Mrs. Delacroix called, and Mrs. Graves said, All of us took the same chance. Shut up, Tessie, Bill Hutchinson said. Well, everyone, Mr. Summers said, That was done pretty fast, and... Now we've got to be hurrying a little more to get done in time. He consulted his next list. Bill, he said, you draw for the Hutchinson family. You got any other households in the Hutchinsons? There's Don and Eva, Mrs. Hutchinson yelled. Make them take their chance. Daughters draw with their husbands' as families, Tessie, Mr. Summers said gently. You know that as well as anyone else. It wasn't fair, Tessie said. I guess not, Joe, Bill Hutchinson said regretfully. My daughter draws with her husband's family, that's only fair, and I've got no other family except the kids. Then as far as drawing for families is concerned, it's you, Mr. Summers said in explanation. And as far as drawing for households is concerned, that's you too, right? Right, Bill Hutchinson said. How many kids, Bill? Mr. Summers asked formally. Three, Bill Hutchinson said. There's Bill Jr. and Nancy and little Dave and Tessie and me. All right, then. Mr. Summers said, Harry, you got their tickets back? Mr. Graves nodded and held up the slips of paper. Put them in the box, then, Mr. Summers directed. 
Take bills and put it in. I think we ought to start over, Mrs. Hutchinson said as quietly as she could. I tell you, it wasn't fair. You didn't give him time enough to choose. Everybody saw that. Mr. Graves had selected the five slips and put them in the box, and he dropped all the papers but those onto the ground, where the breeze caught them and lifted them off. Listen, everybody, Mrs. Hutchinson was saying to the people around her. Ready, Bill? Mr. Summers asked, and Bill Hutchinson, with one quick glance around at his wife and children, nodded. Remember, Mr. Summers said, take the slips and keep them folded until each person has taken one. Harry, you help little Dave. Mr. Graves took the hand of the little boy, who came willingly with him up to the box. Take a paper out of the box, Davy, Mr. Summers said. Davy put his hand into the box and laughed. Take just one paper, Mr. Summers said. Harry, you hold it for him. Mr. Graves took the child's hand and removed the folded paper from the tight fist and held it while little Dave stood next to him and looked up at him wonderingly. Nancy next, Mr. Summers said. Nancy was twelve and her school friends breathed heavily as she went forward, switching her skirt, and took a slip daintily from the box. Bill, Jr., Mr. Summers said, and Billy, his face red and his feet over large, nearly knocked the box over as he got a paper out. Tessie, Mr. Summers said. She hesitated for a minute, looking around defiantly, and then set her lips and went up to the box. She snatched a paper out and held it behind her. Bill, Mr. Summers said and Bill Hutchinson reached into the box and felt around, bringing his hand out at last with the slip of paper in it. The crowd was quiet. A girl whispered, I hope it's not Nancy, and the sound of the whisper reached the edges of the crowd. It's not the way it used to be, old man Warner said clearly. People ain't the way they used to be. All right, Mr. Summers said. Open the papers. Harry, you open little Dave's. Mr. Graves opened the slip of paper, and there was a general sigh through the crowd as he held it up, and everyone could see that it was blank. Nancy and Bill Jr. opened theirs at the same time, and both beamed and laughed, turning around to the crowd and holding their slips of paper above their heads. Tessie, Mr. Summers said. There was a pause, and then Mr. Summers looked at Bill Hutchinson, and Bill unfolded his paper and showed it. It was blank. It's Tessie, Mr. Summers said, and his voice was hushed. Show us her paper, Bill. Bill Hutchinson went over to his wife and forced the slip of paper out of her hand. It had a black spot on it, the black spot Mr. Summers had made the night before with the heavy pencil in the coal company office. Bill Hutchinson held it up, and there was a stir in the crowd. All right, folks, Mr. Summers said. Let's finish quickly. Although the villagers had forgotten the ritual and lost the original black box, they still remembered to use stones. The pile of stones the boys had made earlier was ready. There were stones on the ground with the blowing scraps of paper that had come out of the box. Mrs. Delacroix selected a stone so large she had to pick it up with both hands and turn to Mrs. Dunbar. Come on, she said. Hurry up. Mrs. Dunbar had small stones in both hands, and she said, gasping for breath, I can't run at all. You'll have to go ahead and I'll catch up with you. The children had stones already, and someone gave little Davy Hutchinson a few pebbles. Tessie Hutchinson was in the center of a cleared space by now, and she held her hands out desperately as the villagers moved in on her. It isn't fair, she said. A stone hit her on the side of the head. Old man Warner was saying, Come on, come on, everyone. Steve Adams was in the front of the crowd of villagers, with Mrs. Graves beside him. It isn't fair. It isn't right, Mrs. Hutchinson screamed, and then they were upon her.